You're listening to Paint the Town Podcast with your hosts. LA Street Art Gallery resident artist, teacher, and founder of LA Street Art Gallery, James Chen of Thank you for tuning in to the Paint the Town Podcast. I'm James. I'm teacher. And we're here today with Jeremy Novi. He's an artist from San Francisco, and uh, he's here visiting in Los Angeles, and he's actually moved down here just four months ago, so we're really happy to have him here today. Welcome, Jeremy. Oh, thank you. What, uh, do you have an alias that you go by uh, uh, when you do your art in the street, or is it just Jeremy Novi? Um, I don't, I don't normally sign my, my work. Smart. I, I Very feel, smart. I feel that like signing your name sometimes uh, creates a provenance. Um, that isn't necessary. Like ones, uh, I mean, at, at a certain point, you know, um, if it says Banksy on it, it's supposed to be high valued. But the same thing happened with like Andy Warhol and a num- num- number of other artists uh, through through time that they were producing art that wasn't necessarily great and, and whatnot. But they just put their name on it, and because their name was on it, we we recognize it as being great. I really feel that our the art should stand alone by itself without um, necessarily having these tags that go along with it. Well put. What uh, what what images do you do you usually put out on the streets? Um, I I I have like uh kind of my 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 koi and like these birds and and these kind of imagery that use iconography. Um, and there's usually a meaning behind the animal that I use. Um, uh, but I also put out uh, images of of uh, queer queer imagery. Um, sometimes stencils of leather men or drag queens uh, to try to create queer space and take back the the streets um, in, a, in an activist approach. Okay, so we got a couple of different images that you work with. That's nice. When um, I'm taking a look at it right here, real quick, just uh, you know, to be honest. Yeah, I know. I've seen it. I've seen this all over. Yeah. Uh, this is one of the things that this podcast particularly wants to do is. Um, you know, a lot of artists are really humble people, and they they really, like you said, they want to just put quality work out there. You know, and um, it's kind of, it's kind of cool that you don't sign your work. You, you know, I mean, I, I kind of found you. Well, you know, when you do things like this, you don't really need to. You know what I mean? Get if you do style. something like this with a certain style, you get to be known. Um, you know, you really don't need to. Um, so, uh, when when did you decide you wanted to put images on the street? Um. About like uh, 2000, um, I started doing like stickers um, and, and putting those like on the street and the stickers slowly evolved um, into other things. Uh, back in Milwaukee in 2006. Wow, uh, Milwaukee. Yeah, Milwaukee. Where are you from? Where are you, I'm sorry, where are you from originally? Uh, Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin is where I'm originally from. And back in 2006, I started putting stencils of doors and windows like um, on, on the streets. Uh, uh, and it was the first time that like my stencils started getting much bigger and they actually became kind of like street art instead of just a, a sticker. Um, and I was trying to talk about uh, the, the problem with boarded up buildings. Um, like Detroit and Gary, Indiana, there's like obviously lots of problems and crime and other uh, uh, things of urban blight that has been created due to boarded up buildings. But in Milwaukee, as industry left, I, I started um, you know finding more and more buildings boarded up there. And so I started doing large, uh, life-size stencils uh, nice. of, of doors and windows, and that was the very first um, life-size kind of images. And uh, it, w- it was a pretty su- successful interventionist um, pro- pr- project, interventional project. Um, it definitely made uh, the city of Milwaukee and um, people start to pay attention um, to these boarded up buildings, and they re- uh, and study the law that was there, but no one was really paying attention to it. That you can only board up a house for six months without a five hundred dollar fine for each month after that. Um, and so my project, I thought, was very, very successful in the fact that, like, kind of it, it changed um, this process. And I, I started to um, think about doing more stencils and and more things. Dude, um, that's awesome. I mean, yeah. wow, that's that's right uh, making a difference in the community with your with your artwork right there. That's awesome. Very cool. Yeah, I'm just taking a look right here. I mean, some of these icon- some of these are really iconic, man. I mean, anybody on social media has seen the koi fish, y- y- you know. And um, if you check out, is this yours right up here? Go back up. Is this yours right here? Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So that's a, a, a cowboy. Um, I kind of did these uh, kind of cruising 
um, men's series of, of what Celtics market in San Francisco used to be, um, which, which kind of was uh, an area of men kind of cruising one another um, for, for sex or, or whatever. Um, and, and I just made these like stencils that were um, of men cruising um, and, and put them around San Francisco in the, the South of Mark, Mark area. What was like cruising? It? Just curious. Then. Um, well, like, I mean, uh, kind of cruising is, is like when, when you're trying to like kind of pick up someone with, with, uh, with uh, yeah, you're trying to holler. <laughs> and it's kind of cruising. It's like, you know, these, these apps that are on your phone or, or like Grindr or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah, that stuff. It, the tools they have these days that make it so much easier. <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah, so you just have to stand in this. So I, got, I have a question for you. So, um, <laughs> what was uh, what was your uh, intention in putting this particular image up? Were you, was there any particular message you were wanting to convey, or just to show that it exists? Or um, it was kind of like my uh, when I when I first started moving or when I first moved to San Francisco, I started doing these like life size um, images, and it's like kind of one of my my first were these cruising men, um, and then from there I did these like life size. Like drag queens um, and stuff, but it was it was about putting um, an image out there. I, I, th I think that it had to do with like my photography degree, and so I have a degree in photography. Ah, okay. Um, and the way that you visually see the landscape, you see like everything. It's not like you just see like a garage door or a stop sign or stuff like that. That normally, you know, you put art on. You kind of see like everything. And I was really trying to like put images on the street that possibly were real, but they're not there. Like, like they should be there maybe, but they're not there. Like I started doing stencils of like uh, pay phones, put them in all the empty pay phone stands. And I started doing these like life-size uh, people of, of, uh, of the queer community um, and, and, and putting them in, you know, uh, certain neighborhoods, knowing that it was a little bit more safe to do these images in San Francisco because of the, the bubble there than it was um, to do these same exact images back in Milwaukee. Um, so in Milwaukee, um, and Chicago. Can, can we talk so, okay, where you grew up? Where in, in Milwaukee? Milwaukee. Okay. Chicago is an hour and a half away. So whenever ah, um, yeah, that's we'll right. Just hop on the train and go out <laughs> there and paint and sure. come back. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little commuter Amtrak ride. And picks it up. Convenient, nice. So when, um, when, when did you come to San Francisco? Like, how old were you when you went to San Francisco? Uh, it was 2008. I moved to San Francisco, um, and I was 28. So, okay. um, yeah, like 10 years ago. Okay. Would you say that you were kind of, um, repressed in the area that you were in, in Milwaukee? Um, I mean, things were different in Milwaukee. Uh, um, I mean, I worked at like a, a gay bar there, so I kind of knew that the gay community that existed, but it wasn't so open the same way, the way that San Francisco was. And there just seemed to be like a lot more people in San Francisco that would be more accepting to my images, where back in Milwaukee um, or Chicago, you know, you could get beat up um, oh, uh, for, for, for being queer, um, doing graffiti or street art uh, back back in the, you know. Did you ever have, you ever have anyone try to cost you? Um, I mean, I, 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 I friends of mine have had things, but I, I haven't had, had any, um, real issues, um, painting, um, besides, like, the guy. You look like a sizable, strong fella, so, of course, that helps. Yeah, there's always someone a little bit bigger than you, so. Oh, yeah. Like, yes. Yes. And, and, you know, if you're out late, late at night, uh, of course, there's going to be another big, scary guy out there. Cause always bigger. Yes. <laughs> when big, scary guys exist, it's late at night. So. Yep. <laughs> Now, in Absolutely. Chicago, what images were you putting up? Or and in Milwaukee, were you putting up any images yet? Or were you just pretty um, much? Um, they were just like you know, like uh, like my stickers and like graffiti, oh, stickers. Okay, graffiti, graffiti at a yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Like um, um, when when I was doing that, um, I since I since don't put out uh, a name anymore. I don't even sign my artwork. Um, so that kind of uh, it's like a period, gift. anonymous period of, gift, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so that kind of period of like the graffiti and whatnot um, um, was 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 like Chicago and, and Milwaukee and like kind of learning learning um, the can and just like learning street art culture um, and like understanding like the graffiti art rules um, uh, of the street. Um, yeah. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> you know, so one of the things basically I want to talk to you about is when, you know, just San Francisco, first of all. I mean, you know, this is LA Street Gallery. Uh, we're LA's oldest street art blog. I want to, uh, you know, you just moved down here from SF. I mean, how, what's the difference, man? I, I mean, <laughs> uh, I mean, people people are different, so it's it's like different, you know. Um, uh, 
uh, meeting people. And the city's the city's much larger. You know, um, San Francisco is only seven miles by seven miles. And when I first showed up in San Francisco, I was like going out and, and painting at night and and we pasting things up. But of course, you're gonna run into someone. You're gonna see them like you know a couple blocks down, and then like quickly you're gonna start like meeting um other other artists like uh, that's how I met Eddie Cola um you know uh, uh, he's, he's now like in Paris and stuff but uh, when I moved to San Francisco he was doing a lot of wheat paste kind of pieces um, and some of them that like uh, talked about like kind of queer rights and um, Im images like that and so we started like kind of hanging out and he introduced me to like Dave five and and like these other um, San Francisco uh, street artists um, uh, of course you know the, the the I met some other graffiti artists in, in that nature um, but of course I mean but I wanted to like hang out more with uh, uh, the, the street artists. There's definitely a difference between graffiti artists and street artists when we're going out and putting up our art. Like graffiti artists can like finish their thing really quick. Where like street artists, it takes a little bit of time. We have to like think about our space. Like, we have to think about our surroundings. And, and um, so there's a little bit of a, like a difference when when you know you're, you're going out with those people and, and doing art at the same time um, compared to going out with other other street artists. I love it, man. Absolutely. Like, before we get off this topic, teach. Have you ever ran into anybody in the street like? Put up art while you're doing it because I, I mean I know you're quick too but you know it's, you kind of take your time sometimes these days too man so you're a little bit of both you know I there has been I would say in the what eight years a total of, of three times okay that uh, maybe four where I was actually working on a box and someone drove by and like teach I take that back. Seven. There were there were there were a couple other times okay, okay. that I'm remembering now. But well, what about like other artists putting up work inside the uh, at, at the moment or anything like that? Not really. No, no, that not not anyone that was out putting something up. And I was, dude. LA is huge. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like it's so yeah, big. To, yeah, I don't think now, you know, granted. Um, let me think. Uh, if I was ever putting stuff up on Melrose and. No, and that's just, I mean, coincidence. There's yeah, so much yeah. stuff that goes up on, on Melrose near Fairfax. I mean, that there's collaborations that they go out together planned, you, you know? Right, but right. It's just, it's just kind of, it's interesting to see that, uh, um, you know, like SF is so different, man. Let's talk about like Market Street for a second. You said you put up some of your work on Market Street, man. I mean, I just recently went there last year, and you guys are like so nice, man, that uh, I stayed in a hotel just, just at the uh, corner of Market Street. You know, you turn one wrong corner, man, and you're at a homeless person festival, man. They're all partying in the street, you know. <laughs> They're all like, they have forties. The thing is, like for us, I mean, a lot of people think we're uh, kind of like just surface people, you know. So we kind of just push them all to a place called Skid Row. You know? <laughs> That's what at least the, the the city does, you know. So I mean, uh, you know, so what do you think the change is? I mean, yeah, it's a bigger city. You know, but, you know, what do you think about that? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, when I moved to San Francisco in 2008, it was a lot different than what it is today. <clears throat> and that's just like 10 years ago. Um, and in the process, of, uh, San Francisco has gone from uh, being a place that you could just go out and paint during broad daylight and no one would question you if, it made it, if you made it look like you were supposed to be there painting. Um, there was a time period that the San Francisco um, got rid of their uh, permit permit fees um, to allow for more murals to happen on the street. But all that stuff is gone as like more and more techie people have gone uh, have moved there. And as more and more of these condos go up, there's now not like these vacant lots to kind of paint in or or do things. You know, when when the earthquake happened, there was a bunch of buildings that were demolished and and they still hadn't been um, built until um, you know a couple of years ago. They now started filling in these these uh, below ground places. And one, one thing that's fun about below ground places that, is that you can paint below ground places like during like, you know, broad daylight. Pretty people tunnels. aren't, people aren't looking down in there. Yeah. You know, there's, there's that like green kind of mesh thing covering the fence. And then hmm. as soon as you're done, you just like take that green thing down and you can like see, see like in the underground um, um, areas of, of San Francisco. So, you know, that, that part is definitely um, different here. Uh, I think there are areas that you can just like go about painting um, and, and, and doing things if, if you think about covering up uh, some old tags and some other um, decay that's happening on, on a wall. But, um, you know, San Francisco, it was just like so much, I don't know, I think uh, easier at this, this one time when I moved there. But like now it's since changed. Like it, it's not it's not that anymore. Um, and uh, the city's becoming more and more clean and buffing constantly where they used to not buff um, because of the, the, the 
the condo building themselves has cleaning people instead of the city has the cleaning people or the neighborhood association has those cleaning people. Now it's actually the condo building themselves that they actually go forth and no, they're gonna they're gonna react a heck of a lot quicker than too. Yeah, yeah. So your stuff doesn't last um, um, the same way, and and then the, you know more and more people are becoming homeless, and there's just like homeless people uh, everywhere. Um, and I don't know if that's like you know um, good because like sometimes I'll, like I'll be out doing stuff and there's someone breaking into cars like like punching the the window um, to steal any goods and you know normally there used to be a time like if you're out spray painting people kind of want to get away from you people are like hey, whatever but now they're like oh you're spray painting I'm gonna break into this car you're not gonna tell on me. Like there really is a huge problem with people breaking into um, cars in San Francisco, just breaking the window to pop the, the I don't know, just yeah. So, so let me ask you, which is scarier so far? Because we were just with uh, Unfuck Yourself the other day. She's a she's an artist basically, and you know she's she's her her studio shared with Plastic Jesus is like somewhere in the in the, the sketchiest uh, sub area. Near downtown L.A. Um, <laughs> And basically near the, the I-10 and Hill Street. And South Central Skid Row. <laughs> well, it's a little bit off of Skid Row, but basically it's the yeah. uh, popular for RVs where they cook up meth, I, I guess. And, <laughs> wow, in the city here. And, yeah. <laughs> and right outside their, their studio, there was an uh, RV parked that blew up. And they had to replace the tele the power pole. It was such a bad explosion that the power pole that was next to it had to be replaced. And then I think she said maybe like within the same week, there was another RV that was just down the street that blew up as well. <laughs> so I guess the, the point of the story there is if you you see an RV – you know, and it doesn't look like See it's in good condition battery. and it's kind of parked somewhere and you, you <laughs> might want to. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just saying, L.A. scarier or San Francisco scarier so far? Um, I mean, I haven't. Um, well, one thing that kind of does. Um, it's like the gangs here, you know, they're, they're out, um, I see their gang graffiti and tagging, and, yeah. and, tagging mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And I'm a little afraid to like, you know, go out and be doing something in maybe the wrong neighborhood and someone just oh, like, yeah. you know, shooting first and asking questions later. Oh, because you you, you know, absolutely need to be careful which yeah, neighborhood you, know, you go up in here. Or something like that. <laughs> it's like so this that, smelling blood. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that part, um, you know, uh, scares me a little bit. Um, than, than San Francisco, but of course, when you go over to Oakland, you have to have oh. you know similar similar kind of fear and like painting the wrong. <laughs> wrong neighborhood you have, like, with you of, of yeah, is, are there any? Stairs. I mean, I know there's like little section like Piedmont is like a nice spot in Oakland, right? You know, but it's like whenever I, I fly, I'm an Oakland Raider fan, man. You, you know, and because uh, you know they used to be in LA, and. I think it's just getting worse and worse, man. It's, you know, the homeless problem and things like, is it getting better? Since last time I visited, I mean, you yeah, know. No, like, so um, <laughs> uh, people people are being forced, um, forced to ba basically commit crimes to be able to feed themselves. You know, they're, they're, they have a problem uh, paying rent. And so at one time they were housed. Like, they say uh, more than 50% of the people that are homeless right now in San Francisco at one time were housed in San Francisco. So San Francisco, what they've done is they've like, kicked out all of these people that, like, had somewhat of a, maybe a, a mental um, situation or or um, they were like poverty like already poor um, and whatnot and, and they made where they, they, they can't pay rent and so on top of that they now can't like feed themselves and they're living on the street and and you know you think living on the street is actually cheap but it's not when you actually have to continuously buy food you can't conserve food you have to buy things on the go you can't like have a house filled with like you know uh, cleaning toothpaste and stuff like that you like literally need to, need to go and so it's forced these people um, onto the street and and now they're committing crimes in order to feed themselves or or, or, or to have, have have these things that like you know um, the city used to give them and and, and, and and it's really bad there's like a lot of like beatings really bad beatings um, a couple of them happened recently uh, south of market um, and in the Castro um, to some gay people and they're they're trying to 
uh, figure out if it's the same person. It's somehow connected to like a hate crime right now. This is like literally in the past week. I'm um, going out oh, there, wow. and, and and like these things didn't happen before. It used to be that you would be in the Castro neighborhood and stuff, and you're safe. You didn't have to I worry see. about someone coming up behind you with a, a gun, a knife, um, a hammer. I, I watched someone get hit in the head in the Castro with a hammer. Oh, and that was pretty fucking crazy. To, like watch their body fall and oh, like. Um, but but like this is all stuff that wasn't happening in San Francisco when I first moved there. You know, it's like the city of peace, love, and and hippies and stuff like that. But as the city has made more and more people like really poor and not give them housing and stuff they've gone to committing more and more crimes um in 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 ways that you used to really see all these crimes happening only in oakland um but now now you know like the people are coming over into san francisco or they're they're uh, on the streets in san francisco um and they're and they're doing these things just to kind of like survive and and i mean like crime isn't crime isn't right um at at all And, and like you know random acts of violence isn't right at all but like somehow in my head like and i don't i don't stand up for that at all like i really don't but somehow in my head i really feel that like it, it's not necessarily their problem i mean it is their problem it's it's their fault or, or what i don't feel it's their fault i feel that somehow like the city of san francisco um and and like these people that like walk around um uh, uh whatever it, it's kind of their 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 fault like they're forcing these um people yeah. to do do these things well, from what you're saying, from what you're saying, they they had provided a, a little bit of a safe haven for them, and then they decided to change that. Maybe because they're trying to gentrify the area, and they didn't have a really good solution for them. And you know, <laughs> it it comes down to a, a, a humane, instinctual thing. You want to survive, you know. And if you're already dealing with some mental issues or something like that and a city was providing you with a safe haven and they take it away. You know, I, I agree. I don't think it's right to do crime and everything, but when you create an equation like that for someone, you, you know, it's, it's, it's hard decisions, you know? So you really can't blame them that, uh, you know, you, you kind of have to expect this, basically. And, and I don't, you know, no, uh, no way of having the, an idea of what the solution is, but, um, you know, when you see things like that, you would hope that there would be an effort towards, you know, uh, figuring it out, um, which kind of adds to what we're dealing with these days with, you know, the, the people trying to come across the border. Yeah, yeah. Well, one thing, I mean, I want to I get back to that right now, but one thing I want to admire about both of you guys is that uh, you guys are street artists. I mean, you guys are doing your part to uplift the, you know, bad parts of the community, man, you know, and you guys are putting art in the street and that beautifies it and at least... Like I said, that's a gift to uh, you know whoever's passing by. A lot of times, those are the homeless people too. You know, what I mean, so I appreciate that both about you. But yeah, let's definitely. I mean, talk about the uh, the immigrants. It's basically therapy for me because it's all I can do. You know, at this point in time, I'm so busy with you know with life and children and everything. You know, I'm I'm sure we all wish we could do more, but um, you know, and who knows what the I don't even know what the, exactly the right thing to do is. Yeah, that's the thing. So. You know, for me, I just try to put some peaceful images out there for the most part, you yeah. know, and then when when the current political situation or um, whatever is angering me or, or, you know, provoking me, then I'll put some images to address that as well. But, you yeah, know, um, yeah, for the most part, it's 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 like a, a therapy, you know, it, it, it at least makes me feel like I'm doing something with the, with the talents that I have. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about you, Jeremy? Yeah, no, I mean, I find, like, um, me putting my art out there is, is like, uh, therapy. Um, but, like, in the past couple of years, like, I've really, like, thought about it, like, slightly in a, in a different way. Because um, art isn't just therapy for the people that create it. It's also therapy for people that look at it. And so I've been, like, given um, so many uh, different stories of how the, the koi remind them of, like, uh, the first time in a different city or, or the, the koi stencil somehow remind them of their wedding um, they had in some or like the San Diego Zoo as a child or or, or these things and, and so they, they became therapy uh, for, for people and I think that like with my queer images putting my queer images out there and trying to reclaim queer space or or give like queer visibility when we're bombarded with so many advertisements that have heterosexual people on there for, for everything I guarantee you know, there's going to be 
something of, of that queer images out there. And so I think that it, that it becomes a therapy for the people seeing it. Absolutely. The street, um, as well as, you know, me myself trying to uh, deal with whatever when I when I create the artwork. Let's talk about the koi for a second. I mean, um, you know, what was the inspiration behind it? You, you, uh, you know, when, when, when I guarantee you most people are going to have uh, a very interesting memory of, of koi fish. Yeah, yeah, you know? definitely. I know I have. I've, <coughs> I've, have some friends that have a koi pond, and they have some koi that are about four and a half, five feet long. Oh my God! Oh, seriously? Yeah. yeah, they're like the kind that are ten, twenty thousand dollar koi yeah. or something like that. Okay. And the crazy thing is, they'll come right up to you and with their head up out of the water, with their mouth open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like you could basically take the pellet and drop it in there and, and pet their head yeah. a little. Yeah, so they're, they're definitely a domesticated fish. If you think about like cats and, and dogs, yeah. <laughs> is that so? So like uh, thousands of years ago, um, the Japanese or possibly the Chinese, or you know, the little yeah. who did it first? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, they ended up putting um, regular carp into rice patties, and in those in that process, they started eating specific bugs that were in the rice patty and certain animals that that were in the, that area. Um, and they started to get spots on them. They then took the animals out of, of the pond and started breeding them to what we have now as, as the koi. Um, I'm not really sure oh, like, wow. what exactly it's some great history here. Spots, but it's like flamingo. Flamingo are white um, in the winter and they have to eat a lot of shrimp brine in the spring in order to turn pink for the summer month. And, and <laughs> I and never that's knew how, that. Yeah, that's, so, <laughs> that's awesome. So it's their diet that causes flamingos to be pink. And, and with koi, um, it's their diet that causes them to be white, um, orange, yellow, blue, wh whatever, whatever variation that they That's now amazing. have. Um, uh, and, and if they don't eat their, their diet, um, in two generations, the, the babies that they will have will just be regular carp. Whoa. So, so, Dude. Uh, well, you know what? I guess if you're going to be painting carp all over the place, you better kind of know yeah, yeah, a yeah, few people, things about it. People have educated it. me, and, and, and I, 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 I'm more educated in um, a koi than I was when I started <laughs> making them. Like, oh, wait. So, like, were there times where you were painting them and people came along and gave you some knowledge on them? Yeah. Did you know? And, yeah, yeah. And then I, like, I mean, I've done like a little bit of research, and um, uh, koi are really hard to eradicate when get when placed into nature, and they like rip up waterways and and the other things, which is I kind of enjoy because I'd like to think that it's really hard to eradicate my urban koi. Um, yeah, they are. Like once once they're there, they're there, and and that's how. And who would want to? I mean, you know, I mean, to want to get yeah. rid of something like that is such a, a, a wonderful you know thing to have I tell you man I mean people send me especially I have a lot of friend in NorCal um, my little sister she lives in uh, uh, NorCal as well San Jose area um, but you know people always when they first discover street art I meet them I tell them about kind of like hey I do you know what we do and they start seeing it everywhere you know it's like a once you get infected and you see it you start seeing it everywhere right everybody has that has that feeling right and I guarantee tell you man always they're sending me your koi bro <laughs> I just think we should say something, man. You know what I mean? It sticks out to people. And I, I got to ask you. Um, uh, so you know, Banksy does like a little rat, right? Or you know, Black Rat does a rat too, and things like that, right? So I mean, did this have any inspiration behind that too, um, or? Just curious. No, but I can tell you a really awesome okay. story about black. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, black? black? I love black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, just a second, just a second. So everybody knows uh, Black Lerat is this, uh, I guess he's a French artist, um, and he was doing stencils of the rat before Banksy was. Um, and he's, he's still out there active today. Uh, you can follow him on Instagram. Um, uh, Black the Rat is his Instagram. Yeah, I mean, the thing I love about it is I remember him talking about it one time, and it's kind of like, uh, you know, when a city is like uh you know dirty or something like that infested you see these like little rats too so that was something about the inspiration behind it i'm not or you know i saw it or maybe it was banksy too where banksy kind of like uh emulated that too but uh, you know that's why i wanted to ask so i want to hear the black the rat story yeah let's hear the black yeah, rat story so um <laughs> uh I, it, i'm in san francisco i think it's like 2010 um, Black Little Rat's having his show there for his 60th birthday, um, and uh, he's doing a little 60. workshop. Um, yeah, he's, he's uh, I think, 60, 
65 or 67. I mean, he's, he's like older and he's still like doing his stuff. He's still doing his stuff and he's definitely in his 60s. He's doing his stuff like all over the world still. But um, he, uh, I, I'm like, oh, I, I really look up to you because um, he's known as the godfather of stencil art, like the person that started Absolutely. And, and putting it on the street. And I was just like uh, starstruck in a way to be able <laughs> yeah. to. Like, I would be too. Be I like, hey. Um, and so I'm like, hey, my name is Jeremy. I'm a stencil artist. I teach classes. I, yeah, I, yeah. I do this thing. Um, I, I do the koi, at which time he completely like stopped me, um, telling me that he had been talking about me throughout the week. And then he asked me, he's like, you know, I got famous for stenciling just a rat all over Paris. Um, and, and like, I mean, I, I kind of knew that he did the, I mean, he knew, knew he did the rat, but I didn't realize that that like really kind of helped emulate his career. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was the rats that like people paid attention to and then everything else kind of fell in line. And, and he told me to just keep doing uh, um, the koi, just like, like um, there, everything else. That's good advice on. from the but, godfather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and so, <laughs> That's like Marlon Brando saying, holding your hand and going, I want you to keep doing this, all right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you so keep like, doing this. I don't know. Um, that's, 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 that's just like the coolest. Uh, no, that's uh, awesome, uh, man. And, that's, that's thing. and that's like, yeah. I mean, I didn't, and then, and then from that, like, I've just kept doing them more and more and more and, and, and starting to do them in more cities. Because I think at that time, like, they've really only been in San Francisco. But now, like, I just try to travel and paint as many yeah, cities dude, as that's... possible. Um, mm. And even if it's like a small little city, I have to stop and get gas. Like, I don't know, I'll just, you know, just do some 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 place and then just be on my way um that's smart and 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 so i don't know like it definitely uh that being told that has definitely emulated me putting them out more um in, in a way and then like now like i assimilate them in the way of like you know banksy or black in in their rat um imagery out there but when i first started creating it i didn't have that same um uh, assimilation or whatever um that that i now now do um from 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 what i was told that's the thing about banksy man i mean we, uh, we just, let's just talk about it for a second because both i always say that uh you know both uh exit through the gift shop really inspired just me la shark gallery to start off then, it was like a textbook for me basically yeah, you know and and you know it's funny that you i didn't even know what it was to be honest with you at the time my wife was doing research for her film a beautiful now and she's you know was always dragging me to these movies that i hated and <laughs> that i <laughs> anyway um and i had no idea what this is about but i was you know wanted to be supportive and i laughed my ass off so hard dude and i was just like wow this this is like a textbook for me thank you thank you banksy you know thank you uh whoever else Jeffrey, helped thank you. um uh, yeah, yeah terry sure. gutta all you guys whoever helped put that damn thing together you made me laugh my ass off and you were like a textbook for me, you know? Now, I, before I go for a little further, just so you know how much I idolize Black, I made a stencil of him, okay? Yeah. <laughs> and it's been put up a few places. Like oh, oh, man. He like signed the koi. I was just like, yes. <laughs> Look at us, we're fanboying over here, man. Hey. I'm 49 years old. I don't care. I don't, I don't mind <laughs> saying that I'm fucking fanboying over here, Black Lerat. Yeah, you well, know what I mean? Awesome. No, well, that's I'm, cool. I'd, I'd like to see that uh, stencil. I don't think I've, I've seen that of a Black. I'll pull it up on my phone later. I got like 7,000 images, and I, <laughs> I'm not that guy that makes you, you know, hold on a second, and I start flipping through there, and you're going, you know what? Don't. Just don't. You know what? Because you've already gone through about 3,000 just standing here, and it's been four minutes, so can we just, you know. Not that guy, so. You know, um, one thing that you guys also share in common, man, is that, uh, you know, you guys are uh, kind of specialized in stencils, man, y y you know, and uh, I think that's, it's a, it's a particular technique, y y you know what I mean? So I'm eager to kind of like uh, let you guys talk about the stenciling in the afterwards. I mean, just your technique on how to do a single layer. There's so, you know, teach develop. Well, no, yeah, I've, I've seen the way he does the, the multiple layers, and I've just, I've, I've decided to stay away from that mainly because of <laughs> my twins. And <laughs> when I was getting started also, we had, uh, <laughs> yeah, that too. But um, we had four cats and a dog. So you got just, you know, destruction machines all over the house. And so I didn't want to have to worry about losing a layer or getting torn up or eaten or destroyed or whatever. So that's why I, I specialize in just the one layer. <laughs> and and very very tough one layer stencil with fiberglass window screen that you know you can basically run over it and you can't rip it apart so it's 
mainly because of my kids and animals that's, and stuff. That's the part I love about like stencils and like when I started doing stencils, I, I really liked um, that there wasn't a bunch of uh, uh, books on stencil art yet. There wasn't really like these YouTube videos of like how to make a stencil. Like you really had to invent like the stencil making process kind of yourself um, and putting it onto the love street. It. And so if you look at the way that like Bleck or um, C215 or Logan Hicks or like all of them, they all have like their own way of doing it. And Logan Hicks, those are basically like one layer stencils. Like he just yeah. sprays in certain areas. I know. That's Log yeah, <laughs> Logan like Hicks. Made, like, um, the stencil looked like it's a multiple, multiple layer. M Logan Hicks did an amazing piece on the Bowery wall that uh, he, he started working on it. And then I don't know what happened, but they had to black over it. And he had to start all over again. Yeah, it started raining, and because it was all paper, because he he put up the the the, the masking, up, yeah, um, masked it off it with just regular regular paper because it was so large. Um, and it started raining uh, for like an hour or two hours, and it just kind of like screwed up the the stencil, so they had to repaint it um, and, and start over. Oh and man, honestly, but okay. you see what I'm talking about? Yeah. Look at that. It's if uh, to explain this, how many faces are do you think is in that? I don't know. There's at least like two, two hundred men, <laughs> two hundred faces, right? Yeah, there. that's a good estimation, actually. Yeah, very I mean, good. To be, you know what? As well as buildings in high detail and everything. Yeah, just just uh, Google image uh, Logan Hicks. This is the kind of now. Does he he use art, a, does he like, use a so plotter? Good. Okay, so let me just let me just tune everyone else in. Okay, now he does use a plotter. Okay, so basically what a plotter is is it cuts the stencil for you. Yeah. Okay. But still, though, even if you got a stencil cut for you, color. to be able to use it the way this man does, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. good luck finding someone that it, can do that. It totally looks like there's multiple layers like of, of coloring and stuff. Um, but but he's able to do like kind of uh, street alleyways are kind of a specialty. Yes. And so the street alleyway will have like certain reflections. Uh, the lights will shine in a certain way. Maybe like a pool of water like in the alleyway is going to shine a different way. And and the way that he's able to kind of uh, spray without having to mask off certain areas where like the colors blend together because that's how street light would be is yep. is really awesome and, and definitely like uh, kudos for him he kind of invented that himself <laughs> and like yeah. put that idea on his own and and that's what that's what like drew me to stencil art was that like you know it's this art medium that doesn't have a bunch of rules and and that's what like drew me to street art which at one time, <laughs> at one time <laughs> um, back in the day <laughs> when i was young no um, uh but but um you know street art used to be something that you could just like you know um do without having rules of like what makes makes street art good or makes you know can you talk good. a little bit about what you understand the the rules to be a little yeah what are the rules of the game that's one of the um, uh, things we always like to ask well i mean i think that like i don't really know what all the rules are um i just know the rules of like respecting other people on the wall um, or, or like certain art in, in certain ways. Um, but I, I think that like um, what, what has gone into like- Well, as opposed to like, okay, if there's a, a paster, um, a hand done tag or a stencil. Okay, so if there's a, a tag, I feel that like, um, well, cause, cause- uh, A freehand tag. Yeah, so freehand tags, like you've always traditionally been able to do bubble fills over top of them. So I feel that if there's like a, a freehand tag there, I can put a poster on top of it. And I would I would consider a poster kind of a bubble fill, you know, it's just like kind of wheat pasted. But at the same time, mm. like graffiti artists don't, they think it's cheating. They think yep. that, that That's the right. poster up is cheating. And so that like, although <laughs> you just covered up that tag, they're probably just gonna come along and cover up your poster um, like and, yes and, and that's then, right like, no know, that's right and, and, yeah. and like stencils i feel that like if you put a stencil that's like multiple layers on top of a tag you've now just put a piece up because traditionally um a piece can go over top of a bubble fill and a piece is is something that has multiple colors in it um in their kind of right. graffiti mural thing and mm -hmm. if you have a stencil that has multiple um layers and multiple colors in there definitely it, it is it's, it's it qualifies as a piece um in in the the tradition of how the laws of graffiti um, should be, but at the same time, we're, we're street artists, and so we we cheat. We didn't we didn't do that that face by hand um, freely. Right, it's not an original. Yeah, it's yeah. a copy. <laughs> you spraying through a stencil, so it's, it's cheating. Just real quick, I want to stop you for a second because honestly, like <laughs> some of the rules that you just said, I mean, this is like implied street code in in a sense because teach. I mean, 
but he's right on. Exactly, and that's what's so crazy to me, man. I mean, you know, in DJing and <laughs> drug slinging and anything, there's a certain unspoken code, man. And it's just crazy that you know you're from you're you're. I would say, can I say that you're based out of San Francisco? Uh, or yeah, I mean, California. 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 I like to say California. Okay, well, no. you called your. Uh, you called your, you know, San Francisco oh, your home sorry. in the past. Now, I mean, now you're in LA, so it's California. And, y you know, the street code is the same. I mean, like, almost saying the commandment is amazing. So, I mean, like I said, just keep, keep going on. You said you're talking about uh, now stenciling versus the wheat paste, basically. Um, yeah, and so, I mean, I think that, you know, uh, a wheat paste is something that can be really quick and, like, put up there, um, whereas, like, stenciling directly on the street, you have to, like, let all those layers dry. Um, yeah. and, and so, like, you know, of, of, of course, but, of course, it's going to be, like, one is, like, you know, harder than the other. The wheat paste is going to probably, um, yeah, it's going to come down eventually uh, with rain or deteriorate over time. Or if they get there in time, they scrape it off before it even dries. Yeah, scrape it off before it dries. So it's not going to last on the street as long as, like, stenciling directly there. Correct. But, but if you're doing a stencil that's, like, you know, eight layers, sometimes it's better just to do it in your studio, especially if it's very large, because now you have, like, you know, a six-foot stencil, and you have, like, eight, eight of them for all the eight layers. Of it. And you're, <laughs> you're toning that around around the city and I mean I like to do a big life size stencil and then I like slide the stencil under a parked car that I'm hoping won't drive off just to allow <laughs> for the layer to dry yeah like, and the, Absolutely. Car, the car is there and it's, it's not gonna move it's late at night um, and it's not in the street anymore and no one's gonna look underneath the car and so it allows for you to like go for a walk and come back 20 30 minutes later and the stencil is dry um, but you know, like doing doing them and then um, uh, having we paste up uh, uh, if you've done the multiple stencils in your studio is just kind of like I don't know an easy way to deal with a a, a large larger larger stencil. Uh, uh, and you know what? Technically, you're you're making original pieces. You know, it's not like you're printing something out of a out of a copier. You know, each if you're doing um, you know a multiple layer stencil on on a piece and then pasting it up. You know, you're you're doing an original piece, and you're and you're pasting it up, so it's almost like basically doing it on the on the box, really. Yeah, yeah. It. I mean, th that and, and I don't know the, the. It becomes original in the sim similar ways if you think about um, uh, Andy Warhol, and like he would make like tons and tons of like the same thing, um, you know, a soup can or or flowers or or you know, uh, uh, Marilyn okay. Monroe. Yeah. yeah. You know, just the same thing over and over again, but each one somehow is like an original um, thing because there's slight variations and. Um, yep. the, the screen would get dirty and as it got dirtier and dirtier he enjoyed that and the same thing <laughs> happens with your stencil like as yeah. you're spraying if you use the same stencil over and over the edges are going to build up um, with spray paint and that spray paint is going to harden basically coating your whole entire stencil with acrylic um, and, and as that builds up uh, certain areas um, are going to go away um, there's like these really weird flares that happen just because of a little speck of sand in your yep. stencil. And yeah. It's so weird, like a little tiny speck can cause like this interesting flare and it's it's pretty much like if you took a picture of someone and you saw that flare light going there's gonna be like <laughs> one area that's gonna have that flare where, where instead of it's everywhere else it's like a crisp clean line yeah uh, from I just that it, little man. speck of sand little details man they make all the difference in the world i love the passion you guys are just talking about you know your art man it's, it's just really amazing to me guys i mean um so so again i kind of just want to welcome you to la real quick and it, have you done any collabs in la um so far in the you know few months you've been down here yet no um i haven't i haven't done any collaborations yet um i mean i've, I've done like done some stuff next to some some people um you know uh homo Home riot's been uh gone um the first three and a half months that i was here he's back now um, he got back at the beginning of this month and so i'm hoping to like kind of go out with him um and and and, and do some stuff um I, I i really have been trying as as someone that constantly is traveling i've been trying to find more people to do collaborations when i'm on the road like when i was yeah. in new orleans like i searched out find another stencil artist um when i was back in milwaukee i tried to find another stencil artist like i i didn't um but, but I think I think that like you know um, doing collaborations uh, with, with with other artists is, is is an important thing you know sometimes, absolutely sometimes people are like oh I have the million dollar artist idea and I don't want you know you to or or I don't want your art next to my art on the wall uh, oh. because like I got permission to put my art up there but at one time, that doesn't sound familiar at all and so um, <laughs> and and like and so like I don't know. Um, we we had a we had an artist here the other day and he put it really eloquently. He's 
Um, Ellie Shore Gallery, man, we cover not only just regular street artists, but you know, we kind of expand the word artists from the street. This is a uh, risky Machiavelli. He painted that cover, and he was telling us about this uh, this cheeseburger theory. <laughs> you know, I, I kind of love it, man. He was saying that you know, there's this uh, cheeseburger mentality. He says that when we're uh, when we all have a single patty burger, basically, it's all good. You, you know what I mean? As soon as that other person uh, has a second patty on his cheeseburger. There's some fools that will be like, man, that patty, how come that fool gets to have a patty and I can't? Or this fool wants to go, hey, you can only have one patty, you can't have two. You know, there's a lot of people in this town, especially in L.A., man, that, <laughs> that really just <laughs> want to keep you from having that second patty. You know what I mean? I thought it's a great way to put it, you know. And, you know, here at L.A. Shore Gallery, man, I want to just reach out to any artist if you want to come on here. They don't want us to have an extra patty. <laughs> So we're going to have an extra patty. You know, hey, I don't care if you have like five followers, dude. If your art is awesome and you have something to say, man, come on, dude. Okay. You know what? I got to tell you this. Um, my uh, my wife was actually uh, close friends with the late uh, and great uh, musician Prince. Oh, wow. And one of the things that he told her was that he tried to do as many collaborations as he could. He goes, yeah. that's what he'll, that's what'll help make you great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I mean, coming from, the, you know. The Don right Royalty. <laughs> seriously, royalty, seriously. I mean, so you hear that, man. Uh, Ellie Shores, reach out to Jeremy Novi, man. I mean, he's looking for collabs. I mean, we're definitely going to... So on Instagram, what is uh, what is your Instagram um, handle? Just Jeremy Novi on Instagram. We um, still got a little bit of time, yeah. Uh, Spell it. Spell it, please. J-E-R-E-M-Y-N-O-V-Y. Just think of Navy, but with an O. Um, my website's uh, Jeremy Novi Stencils because some Chinese company decided to like actually take we my apologize. name. What? <laughs> not to, yeah, not what? To, like, like my, my, my real name is Held Ransom. I've been <laughs> Held Ransom for a while. I can, I can pay eight hundred dollars to get my my domain back. Um, so, and, and what is going on these days? And I've just been like, whatever. I'm just gonna use Jeremy Novi Stencils, and I'm gonna forget about like whatever you. Um, Think you have control over my name? I'm gonna lock that domain, and then I'm gonna be like, "Look, I'm gonna sneak it back, dude. One day I'm surprised." That's just—I mean, the way the the people do things these days is is crazy with all the cyber stuff. Net neutrality coming up. I don't even sure if I know what that means. No, you know what? To be honest, okay. Um, there's so much just misinformation and random crap going on about. I don't even know, to be honest, because it seems like, you know, the Google companies and things like that are, well, first of all, we have no point in discussing it anymore because it's dead, right? <laughs> Net neutrality, right? I mean, we have no decision anymore unless we do something. Yeah, I just I just really didn't understand exactly what it all, you it's know. It's confusing, man, meant. but to be honest, it just seems like, you know, you, in the Internet is like a utility, you know. It needs to be regulated more. It's kind of like... Um, power or water or things like that um the government regulates those things so to be honest i don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing just because there's so many opinions going back and forth i mean do you have any i think that um <laughs> it's a really bad thing to censor uh the internet and, and my reason is like the three months that i spent in china um studying ancient contemporary art that's right. where the koi come from um oh, yes. was during art school like i traveled around what and, part of china um i was in beijing uh, shanghai xi'an um, Jing Shiden, where the porcelain mountain is. Awesome. Wei Lin, awesome. where the porcelain wow. mountains you are. Um, I, I climbed uh, San Chi Mountain, the Three Peaks Mountain. Okay. Uh, where, okay. So it was like kind of um, all of these different art forms, and then going to these uh, places around China that had the the, the the nature or or like you know. Um, Dude, you you and, and you earned the carp. You so, earned those carp fish. Yeah, man. You are. I love it. Yeah. Well, but, Please but go ahead. To, go back ahead. To like this, yeah. the, back to like what opened my mind. It's, it's really kind of scary. Um, uh, uh, going going there from from um, you know the the states. Um, back when I was a little bit younger and and um, not so naive to like things going on globally. Um, you go onto the internet and you couldn't go onto um, you know. Flickr, they like you know your Flickr account no back Facebook. in the day. There, no there's Google. like no Facebook. There's no Google. You do Google Maps of <laughs> any part of China, and it says it's literally unmapped. Yeah. This area is yeah. not mapped. 
And it's just a gray area of the whole entire country. Um, and like you want to search for Tenement Square, and you cannot find anything except for tourists there. And you sit and you have a conversation with someone about, you know, you bring up Tenement Square. They have no knowledge whatsoever of like the protests and, and, and the, the, the um, standing up against the government um, there in China. You know, and I, I saw like no animal rights, no human rights, like just, just like things that, um, you know, I, I, I was scared prior to anything that's happening now. Let and me... now that things are happening, I'm kind of like, I kind of look at like what I saw with the communist um, government uh, overthrowing um, imperialism and like taking over China and, and um, some of the stuff that I researched and how it, it caused people to be starved. They didn't have enough food. Um, yeah. You know, like all, all of Let... these these things. Um, and, and, and now they want to like censor our internet. They're, they're like taking, you know, uh, people's rights away. They're, they're doing all of these things and, and we're, we're supposedly doing it on a democracy. Like it kind of looks like communism. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I agree, and the Chinese government does. I, I'm born here. I'm born in Monterey Park. Um, probably passed it when you when you came here. Um, I'm American. I my parents, uh, you know, they're born in Taiwan. Uh, my grandparents were born in China. They all uh, went over to Taiwan for refugees, and uh, you know, they all call people like me uh, Chinese bridges. Basically, we're like the bridge that kind of carries over the cultures in a sense. So, I mean, I'm going to give you my two cents on it. I agree with everything you say, first of all. But I want to, I want to kind of give you, uh, just from my perspective, even though they don't have Google, they don't have Facebook, right? They have, they have like, their own shit. <laughs> you, you know, they have their own... WeChat. What's it called? <coughs> they have WeChat. Weibo is... Uh, Weibo, that's what I've heard of. Another one. But WeChat is a big thing, man. I mean, it's basically like... It, or, your Snapchat or... Uh, no, none, none of those things work there. None, none of those, they have their own, you know what I mean? So it's like, it's not necessarily that they, um, uh, th so it's kind of like they, they felt, you got to understand the Chinese mentality. During the Opium War, right, it, they always feel, this is in 1860s, basically. Uh, so eight countries went over um, to kind of squash an inner rebellion that was going on in China at the time. So all these foreign powers came in because China, they didn't have a very good uh, military to squash this, so they helped them to kind of take over, uh, to, to just settle and be peaceful. Afterwards, these Western influences kind of just started creeping in more and more and more. So, and then eventually what happened? They started sl uh, slanging opium inside there, right? So the Chinese feel, and then, you know, there's this whole revolution and everything like that that kicked the Westerners out. At the end of the day, it was the communists that kicked them out, even when it was uh, to the nationalists after the uh, emperors ended. You know, it was still heavily influenced and never really strong as a Chinese culture. So I think that the Chinese people, they're very scared, actually, of the Western influences. It's, I mean, yes, partially it is control. Uh, don't, don't get me wrong. But, you know, when, when people have so much information, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's like kind of like, um, you know, they're, they're going to ask more questions. So if they have their own system, they have their own Google, they have their own uh, Facebook and things like that. They feel that they can monitor it better. <laughs> <laughs> monitor. <Yeah. laughs> and you know what? And let me let me tell you something though. One thing though is that you know people always kind of say like, hey, Chinese people, do they know about Tiananmen Square? I mean, I've talked to young people in Shanghai. It depends. Really depends on where you're you're coming from. And you know what? Let me tell you something. If we ask some kid. Uh, from the hood, who the president is right now, he may not even <laughs> even know of the United States, man. You know what I mean? So I kind of want to just put that point in time, point in view, you know. And also another thing is that you know uh, you're talking about famine during that period of time. I just want to touch on this subject a little bit because um, it's something that obvious. I love animals. I have a I have a dog, you know. Um, and uh, you know, I, to be honest, um, you know, I prefer animals over humans sometimes. You know. Agreed. <laughs> But, but the thing is, you know, a lot of people, they care about, like, factory farming these days, right? But we got to remember, in 1930, there was a Dust Bowl in the United States. And uh, we're talking about the famine after, uh, during World War II. I mean, these are major issues that, uh, you know, we don't have anymore. <laughs> we think about, oh, my God, people are so fat from fast food. I mean, if we didn't have this factory farming, people, you know, if there's a natural disaster, 
I mean, shit may uh, shit may kind of like uh, you know fa- get get dirty real quick. <laughs> you know, I mean, when people are hungry, you New know, Orleans, that's when shit goes so, down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what I mean. So I mean, it's awesome to hear your perspective from that man, because you seem like a good old Midwestern boy. I mean, you, you went to San Francisco, you had, but you actually took the time to actually go deep into China, man, and like do all that. So much respect, man. Much respect, dude. Seriously. Yeah, uh, that's what I mean, man. You you definitely earned that uh, the 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 koi icon. If anyone, yeah. if I ever see anyone trying to do more koi, I'll stomp on their head. Teach peace. Teach 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 peace. Yeah, sometimes people just try to be like, you know, um, uh, I think just mean, jealous, bitter, uh, loathing, like any of those those things. All the above. Um, and and so people like said something about cultural appropriation. Yeah. Oh, this and, is getting out of control. Man. And so I I spent three months in China, and while I was there, I studied propaganda posters and Chinese scrolls, and and like that was my thing. And um, there's several different things that happened during the Cultural Revolution, and they started to try to find ways of hiding different knowledge um, from from the government because yeah. they couldn't have scrolls. And I was told a story by a, a student um, at the. Um, Central Academy of Fine Arts in, that's in Beijing, um, that during the Cultural Revolution, they did, devised a plan to hide Chinese-lucky numbers in paintings of koi. So depending on how many koi are in the painting has a different meaning based off wow. of the Chinese-lucky number and like also the, the, the name of the painting. And so they were able to keep Chinese-lucky numbers alive um, when, when they were told that there couldn't be any written scrolls um, or books or, or any of these kind of documents um, that would help uh, keep their culture of the past alive. Real quick, we're gonna, let's talk about the Cultural Revolution for a second because, uh, you know, people who don't understand what that is, I just want to make sure we, uh, we kind of we cover that. Um, okay, so the cult, I, I always say right now, to be honest, we're going through an American weird cultural revolution. Go. yeah. <laughs> okay, like this is odd because in China, Mao kind of gave this command to all the, the po- peasants in a sense and said, hey, we're going to turn our back on uh, these old traditions because they're holding it, us back as Chinese people. We need to meet, move forward. They had the great leap forward. And then so during this cultural revolution time, guess what happened? They're... People are damaging the thousands and thousands year of year old um, monuments and scrolls and things like that. Everybody had to hide anything that had to be traditional Chinese, you know. And the reason why I think that, in a sense, we're going through some weird sort of cultural revolution now is that, you know, if you look at these, uh, there's less and less things that we can say now. We're, we're, um, we're kind of saying, hey, you, you, this word is not allowed now. This word is not allowed now. And I don't, I mean, obviously racism is whack, but... You know, they're, they, they, they were discussing, like, hey, we got to take down these uh, statues, even though, you know, they've been there for a long time because they represent. I'm getting, things, things are getting to be hypersensitive. Yeah. Things are very hypersensitive. So I'm saying that from, from an American point of view, and I understand my Chinese history, it's just kind of bizarre that, hey, maybe this is a, like a natural cycle that whether or not somebody actually gives that command or, you know, it's going to happen naturally. <laughs> Lord of the Flies. <laughs> You kind of follow what I'm saying about yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's kind of weird, right? I, I, yeah, I, I think that, like, uh, the time period that we're in right now is, like, um, a lot of people are, are scared. A lot of people feel entitled at the yeah. same time as being scared. And that is causing chaos um, in the world. Like, if someone feels that they're empowered but at the same time scared, of course they're going to become racist. They're going to become filled with hate. And they're going to, like, turn around and say, no, no, I'm a, I'm a good person. I, I, I'm a religious person. I go to religion all the time. So I can, I can be, be this way. Like, you know, our, our, our religion said that we can you know because I'm, I'm an American and I can just be be mean um, because I, I I feel that I'm entitled but at the same time I'm extremely scared of like what's going on because I don't know what's going on like I don't think anybody not even Republicans or people that like <laughs> yeah are on I think you're right of whatever they literally don't know what's going on and if and if you think about there's like different kind of philosophies and like yoga and Buddhism and stuff and like the f- worrying about the future it, because it's un known causes chaos mental chaos in your your head and like it's about kind of being present and being in like the moment and and the time of like what's going on and i and i think that a lot of people are afraid of the future because they don't know what's there and and it's something that we're forced to think about about the future because it's 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 being you know challenged it's being fucked with it's like being whatever and and so that's causing more chaos in 
in, in the states and, and in people's minds and, and, and it's causing more of these kind of racist uh, behaviors, you know, calling, calling oh, yeah. cops on someone <clears throat> grilling in a park in Oakland. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, no. I've got a, I've got a question. I've got a, I've got a, uh, a very, uh, very out there question because I've, I've thought about this for, for many years. I've talked to a lot of people about it. And if there was any administration that would help uh, prove my point, it would be this one. Okay. Um, and it, only, it comes from the idea that when you're starting a country, you have a president to show how to govern and how to live, right? So you have a president, someone that you model yourself after. Now, once you know how to live and you're established and you're civilized, you really don't need that president anymore. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> I mean, no, because like, like I think morals, so like we, we have like all of these morals that were supposedly taught to us by our parents or, or whatever. And, and we follow those morals just because they've been embedded into us as this is like kind of, you know, nature's law and like how you should really treat one another. You should say please and thank you and stuff like that. All right. So um, my point you know, is presidents like, you know, like it basically has set up very similar things, very similar kind of ideas of how we should act and, and how we should be, but we don't really need someone to remind us over and over again. Like as adults, we don't need our parents. To especially someone, again. especially someone who half the country or more is totally against, right? So why, why do we need to keep having a president? Okay, yeah, don't you think, how about this? How about this idea, okay? <laughs> how about this idea? We got Supreme Court justices, right? Yeah. Okay, there's what, nine of them? Yeah. Okay, there's an odd number. How about we just have them function as the presidential? You're talking about combining things. Yeah. How about they take over the executive office? Hey, man, I mean, okay. we have a lot of things to worry about whether or not we, people can go into certain bathrooms and things. Dude, they sit around and think all day. <laughs> they're doing nothing. You know, they're sitting in robes yeah, hanging out yeah. doing what? Another idea to go alongside with that is actually combining the uh, police department with the sanitation department. You know what I mean? Because, well, you think about it, okay? You got these officers who are out there patrolling, watching a certain area. Why don't you clean up a little bit while you're, you know, get a little bit more respect from their neighborhood? Because, hey, you know what? Not only does that guy keep this neighborhood safe, but he cleans up after us, too. I don't want to hurt that guy. I want to help him, you know? You know what? Teacher for president 2020. No, 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 no more president. How about this? How about this? No more presidents You're right. I mean, in 2020. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Novi will be on the, the undercar right there. What do you think of that? What do you, th what do you think of the idea of basically a massive government reform doing away with the, the whole idea of having a president? Because think of how, how much money is used in elections and how much people don't even think their vote really even works and the kind of chaos that creates. And then you got security, you know, taking care of the guy, you know, shipping around all over the place and making security, uh, secret service and everything. Yeah, I, mean, the internet. I mean, well, how about we take that money and put it towards education? Huh? Yeah, I mean, I think I think that like a lot more um, uh, of that money could go towards, you know, education and, and other things instead of just like tons of money just for advertisements and billboards and posters that are going to like go away and stickers and bumpers and pins that are going to go away into the trash, that goes into the trash that ends up in the ocean um, or, or like wherever, you know, that, yeah, it could definitely be, be used um, in a better way. But I don't do you feel like you need a president? I don't think I need to be lied and told that I live in a democracy. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, simple question. Do you? No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Stop, 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 stop. Simple question. Wait, stop, stop. Simple question. Do you need a president in order to run your life? No, I don't need a president. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We've had enough of. Uh, we've got an internet now to re, you know yeah, refer to. Online. We don't need. Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, it's already rigged anyways. You know what I mean? So like, let's just vote online, guys. You know what I mean? We, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no way anyone can Look, I mean, infiltrate yeah. that, can I'm they? Colin Heights and somehow you know he's a gerrymandering man. I, you know, uh, my my little area maybe has a little more uh, you know wealth, and so it gets lumped into Orange County, man. What the hell is that all about? Dude? You know what I mean? <laughs> when I vote, man. So. <laughs> 
Yeah. Well, they just had a, a vote in the uh, recently. What was it, June eighteenth, where yeah. the uh, they decided to not make a vote on it. Well, we're due for a new governor, right, or something like that. Oh, man. Or we're we're breaking up into three states because some billionaire is uh, behind that. <laughs> you always know there's ulterior motive, man. I don't know, but I I tell you one thing: you could focus a lot more on this, these small district gerrymandering problems, if you didn't have to worry about the big presidential election and all the rallies and all the crap okay. that comes with it exactly exactly i mean you know what again i, I kind of just want to wrap it up right here man but i, I really dude jeremy thank you so much yeah man oh, thank you, you <laughs> amazing information <laughs> and just right experience you have some time but one thing again i want to thank you guys so much you guys are doing your part as street artists in the street man and just putting the message out there it doesn't get more raw it doesn't get more underground and it doesn't gather more respect let's just that. remind everyone the uh how to get a hold of yeah, them and do you have a website you want to plug yeah um jeremy novi stencils.com um I'm, those bastards I'm, I'm, jeremy I'm, starting, novi. I'm starting to teach uh stencil classes um uh through december 9th um at this like lo location um and, and you can like look online to find them um, or go to my website uh, if you're interested in taking stencil classes in LA. The first one will be July nineteenth. Hey, nice. I mean, if if you want, man, we should we should like uh, promote it some more on your on your stuff, and we can even throw a party for. for dude, you. absolutely, yeah, please do. Jeremy Novi, like yeah. Jeremy Novi Stencils dot com. What about Instagram, man? Uh, at just Jeremy Novi on Instagram. Um, okay. And uh, Facebook as uh, Jeremy Novi um, Stencils is my fan page. Yeah. Um, and remember, it's N O V Y. Like Navy, but with an O. Yes. <laughs> exactly. He looks like he could be in the Navy. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's got tattoos, he's got the beard and everything, like he used to be in the Navy. It's and could beat the crap out of you if he wanted to. Yeah, it looks like a seriously guy. Put a nice smile on, though, right? Very nice guy. That's <laughs> But, so anyways, follow LA Street Art Gallery, LA Street Art Dot Gallery, and LA Street Art Gallery on Facebook, Twitter, all that good jazz. Thank you very much, guys. Love you. Take care. Bye. Love you. Dude. And it